I've been on a bit of a Pokemon kick lately. It's something that tends to happen every two months for me. So I figured that this time, why not use that obsession as a vessel for more YouTube ad revenue. Today, I'm getting every single achievement in Pokemon Yellow, which is made possible by using the Retro Achievements website. Looking at the list of 77 achievements here, there does seem to be a bit of bias towards a certain kind of achievement. But other than that, a lot of these achievements consist of me playing the game a little differently than I'm used to, as well as some more grindy achievements that I'm sure will be a great time. Overall though, it honestly doesn't look that bad at a glance. However, you may have noticed there's a new kind of achievement I haven't quite had to deal with yet. Missables. The hints in the name, these are achievements that are only available one time per playthrough. And if you miss your chance, then you have to start a brand new save file to get another chance at them. What fun! Thankfully, most of these seem to consist of do this thing during a specific battle. And I'm very religious with saving in my Pokemon games, so these shouldn't be a problem at all. But how will these achievements stack up compared to some of the fresh hell these Sonic games ended up putting me through? Let's start from the top, shall we? How would you feel if I said that on day one of this challenge, where I only did a short two hour stream, I got 25 of the 77 achievements? Well, that would be a lie because I actually got 31. After giving myself a really stupid name, seriously, what was I thinking? And naming my rival after my lovely partner Lucy, who I'm sure will write an equally lovely comment that'll be pinned in the comments section, I watched this old guy catch this weird looking rat that has a really strange name. Real talk for a second, I had the really funny idea of giving every single Pokemon a unique nickname thought up by myself and my YouTube members. This stopped being very funny when box organization turned into a complete nightmare. So now you'll have to hear the new names these Pokemon have since I had to look at them all for 20 hours. Hope you enjoy! After obtaining PK Thunder, I quickly talked to him to get the not mad, just disappointed achievement. Jesus, dude, I just adopted you. But clearly he's not too broken up about his new stepdad since he dances pretty happily after I jump this ledge and get the look I'm dancing achievement. Unless he's celebrating me being away from him. Is he? After delivering Oak's parcel to the professor, talking to PK gets me the ear twitches achievement, where frankly, he looks even more upset. Why do you hate me, son? It's fine, it's okay. I'll fix this with some nice father-son bonding time. Here, you go fry up the creatures owned by our mortal enemies and I'll cheer you on. Yeah, murder! And also, yay, missable achievement, but don't tell PK. And here, I'll even catch PK a little friend here named Pidgey, which is oddly normal. And and when I talk to PK after that, he seems pretty happy, enough to get me the friendly Pikachu achievement. That's really nice and all, but we can't get him too complacent, oh no. This is the world of Pokemon, and the world of Pokemon is brutal. People sacrifice the well-being of their little friends all the time for gains and profit. We gotta get PK in the spirit of being a tool. So I may have continuously shoved him in and out of the box several times to get him used to the feeling. I think he was a little upset with me afterwards. Yay, an achievement! And all it took was tanking PK's mental health. I then walk around with him a little bit and get the you're lucky I'm feeling generous today achievement, which is a good sign that he's starting to heal from the trauma I accidentally inflicted on him. But who has time for proper reflection on those who wronged you? We've got achievements to get. PK starts to feel a little smug as I prepare my little shortcut, which thankfully gets me another achievement. But soon I won't have to worry at all about slowly making PK like me enough for the other achievements. I do have to put him in the PC some more for the angry ear twitches achievement, which yeah, that's accurate to his thoughts and feelings, but now I can enact my plan. With PK at full health, I can use this fun time spray that a nice man in the grass gave me. After applying it to PK, oh, about 50 or so times, he'll start to really love me. His mood gets a little erratic as we start though. He gets really happy at some points, while at other points he suddenly gets really depressed and almost cries. But if Eventually, after enough time spraying, and spraying, and spraying, and spraying, and spraying. Hey, PK's happy now. It took some coercion and a lot of funny drugs, but now I can comfortably say PK is ready to go on a journey with me. Welcome to the machine, PK. Hopefully you'll be a good little cog. <laughs> 
and so the adventure begins. As I make my way north to Viridian City, I catch Peepus to add to my collection of Pokemon I'll need for a couple achievements later. PK approves of my capture when I talk to him and get the Gotta Catch Him achievement. Then I head into the forest and catch John Cocoon as I battle the trainers on the way. One of this game's achievements, going all the way, requires getting your Pokemon in slot 1 from level 99 to level 100. There are multiple reasons why I'm doing this with PK over any other Pokemon, one of them being that since PK is going to be with us the longest, it makes sense for me to give him as much experience as possible to save time grinding later. So for most of these routes, I'm going to be going around and destroying every single trainer I can for the experience and money, which would make for a really boring video if I just went, oh, this trainer has a Pidgey and a Just Pie. I Thundershock three times in one. I'm so great. So I'm going to be skimming through my time on most of these routes. Once I get to Pewter City, talking to this Jigglypuff puts Pikachu to sleep and gets me the Jigglypuff Use Sing achievement. I then spend an unfortunate 10 minutes switch training John Cocoon up to his final form because I caught them instead of a Just Pie, which would have been much easier to train up. But eventually, I am able to evolve him into John Butterfly, which will help me against the first gym. For those of you that don't know yet, first of all, hi, welcome to Modern Civilization. And secondly, Brock has two Pokemon that are rock and ground types, which PK can't really do much against when he's only level 13. Even with a couple tail whips and a potion, PK is just barely able to knock out the landlady, but needed a lucky miss in order to do so. After PK slurps up all of landlady's sweet, sweet experience, Rocky Slade comes in and PK has to get the hell out of there. Or, you know, I could stay in like an idiot so that PK gets no experience at all. That works too, I guess. Either way, John Butterfly comes in and makes short work of Rocky Slade, so it's not really that big a deal at the end of the day. This gets me the Showdown in Pewter City achievement. In this Pokemon Center at the end of Route 3, this man here will give you a fish for 500 Poke Dollars. As much of a bad idea as this is, since you get the old rod to catch one literally 20 minutes from now, I have to do it in order to get the fish out of water achievement. That's another reason to fight all the trainer battles, to fund all the bad financial decisions these achievements are going to have me make. Next you're gonna tell me there's an achievement for going to college and taking out a student loan. Once inside Mount Moon, I catch two more Pokemon. One of them is this zoo bitch, after which I get the preparing to be the very best achievement for having six Pokemon in my party. I then caught this silly Billy thinking it was a rare encounter. Nope, turns out it has a 10% encounter rate where I caught it. Whoops. Anyway, once I make it to the end, I choose the Dome Fossil for the attack of the prehistoric Pokemon achievement. Why Dome over Helix? Well, which looks better to you? One of the coolest water types ever made, or a walking glory hole with teeth? Vote now in the comments section. It's good for the YouTube algorithm. New to Pokemon Yellow are encounters with Jesse and James from Team Rocket, and you get a missable achievement for beating each of these battles with only Pikachu. Yet another great reason to feed Pikachu a healthy helping of EXP so he can deal with these battles easier, especially considering that missing even one of these achievements will require you to restart your save file. Inside this house in Cerulean City is this girl who's just begging to give her Oddish away, and who am I to say no to this generous offer? This gets me the weirdly named Take Care of Bulbasaur achievement. Silly retro achievements, that's Oddish! Bulbasaur's up north. I figured I could use a little more experience before Misty, which might sound weird considering PK is super effective against all of her Pokemon, but you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. This battle wasn't really that hard with the exception of the sandwich he now has, but even they're taken care of with a bit of group effort. Winning this battle gets me the gatekeeper of the Nugget Bridge achievement and lets me continue north if I want to, but I instead battle Misty first to get it out of the way. Although PK doesn't really have any issues knocking out my pat dick, Starpeen has the chance to be more annoying considering how bulky it is for this point in the game. Fortunately, Starpeen decided it would be fun to use exclusively Harden and Tackle, despite having two perfectly capable water moves. This gives me the win pretty easily and gets me the Water Flower of Cerulean City. All of these achievements were gotten in a single two-hour stream, which is pretty impressive. However, our pace is about to slow down a little bit.
When the next stream came around, my focus was to make as much progress in the region as possible, mainly to get to the part of the game where everything opens up. While trudging through Nugget Bridge and battling every single trainer to give PK more experience, PK learns Thunderbolt. This is not only his most powerful move, but if I talk to him after he gets it, he does his best to give my audience a fucking seizure as I get the signature move achievement. Shortly after, he's forced to watch the Miracle of Science as a punishment, which gets me the... surprised PK face achievement. Ha, huh, I pointed out a minor typo, aren't I cool? I continue south through routes five and six, then I board the SS Anne and clean house. Inside one of these rooms is the TM for body slam, which will be another of PK's main moves. Lucy comes up and challenges me to a battle, but at this point I'm so disgustingly over leveled that PK swabs the deck with the blood of his enemies. Truly, that fun time spray worked wonders. Next, I visit the Vermilion City Gym and partake in probably the most canon battle this playthrough is going to have. <laughs> weak shit! What was that weak shit? Yeah, that's the canon way to beat that fight. This lets me talk to the police officer here and finally get another Pokemon, Lion King 2. I wonder what their parents' favorite movie is. After a quick visit to the fan club in order to let PK know what rejection feels like, I go back north in order to grab this Pokemon that I missed before. And with a trainer as quick to give up as this guy is, I'm sure Game Freak will enjoy my company way more than his. Actually, I don't know about that because it seems like prolonged exposure to me did this to PK. Someone just commented, oh, Pikachu, what are you doing, Pikachu? Are you okay, Pikachu? Pikachu? No, no. Oh, Pikachu? Pikachu? i never seen this before. Are you a ghost type now? It's every- okay, there we go. It's every time, I swear. Every time, every time I find some new glitch when I do something for this series. On my way east, I went ahead and caught a- Nidoran, I am. Before now having to navigate Rock Tunnel without Flash for an achievement. I've played this game enough times now that knowing where to go in this place has become pretty easy for me. But for those who aren't so lucky, pull up a map and pay special attention to your surroundings whenever you enter a ladder. You can use things like the shape of the walls and floor to determine where you are and navigate through the cave. Eventually, you'll reach the bottom of the first floor and go through the exit to get the achievement. Once in Lavender Town, I enter the Pokemon Tower to pay my respects to all the Pokemon PK senselessly slaughtered, only for Lucy to challenge me to a battle. <sighs> Anyway, can we get a moment of silence for all those lost to PK? Okay, cool. Anyway, now that the game has pretty much opened up to me, I make my way to the department store in an attempt to make my PK even better. Time to evolve! No need for the B button. Yeah, I don't think the fun time spray is gonna help with this one. Don't worry though, there is something I can give an evolution stone to. Up at the top of this building, I can grab Marriage, who's just sitting on this table here. Did I just steal this? Oh well, I go back to the department store and grab a water stone, evolving it into the handsome and valid gay marriage. Why do I suddenly have the urge to tell you a really fun fact? Anyway, after battling my way through the rocket hideout in Celadon, I win another Another really easy Jesse and James battle where literally all of their Pokemon are one shots, netting me the make it double achievement. I didn't have such luck fighting Giovanni though, in which the gen 1 mechanics let him cheat by using a guard spec while trapping gay marriage in a bind. This sounds too close to real life. Nothing can stop my overleveled PK though as I win and get the protect the world from devastation achievement. This gives me the sylph scope and lets me climb the Pokemon tower fully. Along the way, I catch my poor uncle Harold who was taken from us far too soon, Discourse, and Malipe. Encountering the ghost at the top of the tower lets me earn the Tower of Terror achievement, before having another easy Jesse and James battle for the Unite All Peoples Within Our Nation achievement. Upon receiving the Poke Flute from this guy, this gives me what I need to encounter and catch Steven Universe for the Sleeper Awakens. West of Celadon, I travel down Cycling Road so that I can register Fuchsia City on my map for later. I also encounter Damn Rat Al Su in the grass east of Fuchsia to save me a catch later. I thought about trying the gym since I'm a little over leveled, but I struggle to kill the first creeper this trainer sends out and get paralyzed for my troubles. This does let me get the better bring full heal achievement for talking to PK while he's paralyzed, but I also figured I should come back here later. I instead decide to ravage the grass gym, and while it does take a couple tries due to bad sleep luck, I eventually win and get the Pokemon Sensation achievement. I give that pun a 6 out of 10. Could have been better, but 
could have been worse. Overall, I still think I made quite a bit of decent progress today, even if I didn't get as many achievements. Up next is the day where I finish the rest of the main game. I began today by hurting my eyes. Seriously, look at this floor pattern and just try to tell me your eyes don't feel at least a little uncomfortable. As much as I love Kanto personally, this place fucking sucks. It's such a slog to go through, especially in Gen 1. And this isn't helped by the fact that PK needs to absorb every bit of EXP from this place into his chubby little belly. That means I have to comb this place for all the trainers and beat every single one. A process that takes almost 40 minutes, even with a bit of speed up. At the very least, this excursion bumps PK up 7 levels and lets me easily beat the next rival fight for the do we really need to do this now achievement. Also in this room is a person who gives me therapy, which is much needed after the hell I just went through. There's also another Jesse and James battle to do, in which they have literally the exact same fucking team as before, but a whopping 4 levels higher! Wow, that'll make a difference! I soon got the denounce the evils of truth and love achievement. Giovanni put up a little bit more of a fight, at least here I have to actually switch my Pokemon a little. It's not quite enough for him to stand a chance though, and I get the extend our reach to the stars above achievement. Man, I sure hope Giovanni doesn't come back for a surprise battle later where PK doesn't really stand a chance. I battle my way through the regular non-Pokemon gym in Saffron City and take the Garnet this guy has on offer, before then beating the trainers in the for real actually has Pokemon gym, and then easily beating Sabrina with PK's mighty body slam. This gets me the Psychic Showdown achievement. I follow that up with immediately flying back to Fuchsia and beating the gym there as well. Those few levels made a big difference in PK's ability to survive here. And fortunately for me, it turns out that leading with three unevolved bug Pokemon and then having your ace be a not very good bug Pokemon isn't exactly a strategy for success. After getting the Ninja Pokey Showdown achievement, kind of a weird name, I make a quick pit stop at the Safari Zone. Following this map that this user on Retro Achievements gave a link to, I walk through to where the Surf HM is while taking as few steps as possible. Along the way, I catch AMERICA! Don't ask why I caught two of these things. CANADA! And Egg Culture. By talking to the guy that gives you the Search HM with 209 steps left, you get the Safari Perfectionist achievement. That got a bit sketchy since I messed up following the path a couple times, so I'm glad this ended up being pretty lenient. Since I had some steps left to burn, I catch a couple more Pokemon here, including Mommy Sorry and Matt exam? Serving south from Fuchsia, I go on a small catching spree from here to Cinnabar to save some time later. In the next 25 minutes, I catch Fodder, Small Daltism, Weenler, Neil, My Pat Dick, and Batman. Once in Cinnabar Island, I revive the dome fossil I got a while back. This gets me the elegantly named My Cabals. I make a quick pit stop at Celadon to buy a water stone and immediately evolve my Pat Dick with it. Inside the Pokemon Mansion, which I swear is somehow even worse looking than Silphco, I catch Goobertron and Grimace as I make my way through and grab the secret key. Inside the 7th gym, these trainers won't actually battle you unless you get the trivia questions wrong. So, I have to to intentionally look stupid and give praise to the almighty TM Tombstoner to get as much experience as possible for PK. Blaine himself is, of course, an absolute joke since PK is quite a few levels higher than all of his Pokemon and has Thunderbolt, so there's not really much to talk about here. Victory here nets me the Volcanic Panic achievement, now that's a great achievement name, and I fly back to Viridian to confront the last gym leader. I beat most of the trainers with my Pat Dick instead of PK because, <gasps> shock and horror! The the last gym leader is Giovanni, the ground type user. And wow, I kinda struggled here. Since PK can't really handle going up against Giovanni's ground types, and since most of my other Pokemon are really underleveled, this was a bit of an uphill battle. Thankfully, this level 2 Pidgey can surprisingly hold off Dugtrio quite well, since Giovanni thought it'd be funny to only give Dugtrio ground type moves. So, with a little help, Pidgey can actually take Dugtrio down and get a lot of levels for its trouble. It takes a few tries, but after beating Dugtrio, PK and Pat Dick can tag team the rest of his Pokemon, given I'm careful on how I send them out. With plenty of sacrifices, because I just love all my Pokemon so much, I conquer the gym challenge and get the Team Rocket's Blasting Off Again achievement. West of Viridian is another rival battle that comes down to the wire due to Sand Slash poisoning PK right away. However, although the level gap is going to close quite significantly pretty soon, PK is still more than powerful enough to take down all of Lucy's Pokemon. 
Pokemon before he succumbs to poison. With the Guardian of Victory Road achievement in hand, and after a quick run through Victory Road itself, it's time for the Elite Four and possibly the hardest achievement in the game. That shocking requires you to beat the Elite Four and Champion in one go with only PK in your party. It also can't be a surfing PK that you can get from certain dubious means. This is yet another reason why I've been feeding PK all this experience. And trust me, he's gonna need every little drop he can get. For as much as PK has conquered this entire region from purely being overleveled, it's right here where that stops being effective. At the end of the day, PK is simply a humble, unevolved rat that isn't able to reach its final form. Thus, his base stats are just not gonna be able to compete with some of the absolute monsters the Elite Four has in its roster. Not to mention, even with all the training PK has gotten, the level curve has finally caught up with him for the most part, and the champion's strongest Pokemon is a staggering level 65 compared to PK's level 70. That's not as much of a difference as you think. You're watching my very first attempt at the Elite Four, which goes surprisingly well, all things considered. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. Therapy freezes PK and I lose. Fun fact, in Generation 1, the freeze status doesn't ever go away naturally unless you're hit by a fire type move. And since I didn't want to waste any full restores and Lorelei doesn't have any fire type moves, yeah, that's just GG. Special thanks to Gay Marriage for providing us with that fun fact. On my second attempt, I just don't get frozen and thus win pretty easily by using Thunderbolt and Body Slam. But now there's a problem. Bruno, the fighting type elite form member has two Rocky Slades. Ah yes, the fighting type Pokemon, Rocky Slade. For as much of a fucking joke as Rocky Slade usually is, when I only have a single PK, he's surprisingly threatening, especially when Bruno has two of them. However, I actually work out the perfect strategy for dealing with them by using Double Team. More on this a little bit later. With this, Pikachu is able to one-shot every other Pokemon with Thunderbolt while slowly chipping down the Rocky Slades with Body Slam. I then get to Agatha under Ghost and Poison type Pokemon, which is where I realize I've made a pretty big mistake. I can make it through most of her Pokemon no problem as long as I don't get unlucky. However, I forgot to bring in some PowerPoint restoring items, which means that after this battle, I'm dangerously low on Thunderbolts and completely out of Body Slams. This makes Lance pretty much impossible. Briligal goes down pretty easily to a Thunderbolt, but I'm then left with only one Thunderbolt left to attack with. After using some double teams and then trying Thunderbolt, it doesn't kill, and now I'm left desperately spamming the rest of PK's moves to try to get struggle. I do eventually get it, and PK is able to take out the two Onyxes, but then Stoner comes out. Here's another fun fact for you. In Gen 1, struggle is a normal type move, meaning that it's not very effective against Stoner. Struggle does this much damage to Stoner, so that's not gonna work. Hyper Beam quickly annihilates PK, ending the attempt. But I got a lot of valuable info from this attempt, including the base strategy I would use to win without needing to level up. How would I pull that off? It's all thanks to a little quirk called... In Gen 1, certain gym badges boost your Pokemon stats by 12.5%, the specific stat being listed in this chart here. When you get every badge, you end up getting all of your stats boosted by 12.5%. The Badge Boost glitch is a Generation 1 glitch where, upon increasing one of your Pokemon stats with a move like Double Team, all of the badge boosts your Pokemon get are multiplied again by another 12.5%, further increasing all of its stats. So by maxing out PK's evasion with Double Team, his attack, special, defense, and speed are increased by 12.5% an additional six times, as well as having a much higher chance of dodging attacks. Now that's a buff rat. I start taking advantage of this on Bruno. By using double team six times, all of PK's stats are buffed, and Rocky Slade here only has a 33% chance to land any of his 100% accurate moves, let alone anything that isn't perfectly accurate. This is why Body Slam does a lot more damage than you'd think. PK's attack is through the roof right now, and so it manages to break through Rocky Slade's defenses pretty decently. This is also why Thunderbolt now tears through literally everything else. PK's higher special, plus a 90 power Thunderbolt, combined with a 50% same type attack bonus, leads to a lot of pain. I do the same thing on Agatha, but not immediately. By beating Aunt Martha first, PK levels up to level 72. The badge boost glitch is reset whenever your Pokemon levels up, so by 
waiting to use it until after this point, I'm safe to set up six double teams and annihilate the rest of Agatha's team. Then, in between each of the upcoming fights, I use a rare candy to level up PK so that I don't have to worry about him leveling up during the battle and canceling the glitch. Time for Lance. I immediately take out Berlegal with Thunderbolt because setting up on it is pretty scary considering how powerful it is. Then I set up double teams on this Onyx, being very aware of PK's health since a crit hyper beam could potentially take me out fairly quickly. With everything set up, I body slam the two Onyxes, Thunderbolt the Stoner, and use two Thunderbolts to take out Spike and win the battle. We've reached the champion fight, but unfortunately this fight is really luck based. I need to set up on this pocket sand because at my current level, a critical hit earthquake obliterates PK in one shot. So we need six double teams ASAP. As if that wasn't bad enough, here's another Gen 1 fun fact for you. Critical hits work off of a Pokemon's base speed in Generation 1. Pocket Sand, having a base speed of 65, has a 12.7% chance to crit, which doesn't sound like a lot, until you realize that Pocket Sand will have about 8 chances to land a critical earthquake, which will almost certainly happen if Pocket Sand ignores your double teams enough. On this attempt, I managed to get all the double teams off and paralyze Pocket Sand, which leaves him unable to move and lets PK finish him off. Believe it or not, that was the main obstacle for this achievement. The rest of the Pokemon are now really easy in comparison. Serial goes down to one body slam, Egg IRL goes down to two, Should You is an easy win with Thunderbolt, Kitsune is the same with a few Thunderbolts, and Zip Zap can't do anything as PK takes the win with two body slams. With that, PK has staked its claim as the ultimate annihilator, and I get the that shocking achievement. Achievement. After registering the ultimate rat into the Hall of Fame, I also get the Pokemon Master achievement, marking the end of the main game and the end of this day's stream. I was not expecting to get the only PK achievement today, so we're running ahead of schedule. The next day was the start of the post game, where I'll start to work towards the big achievement. Truthfully, this section and the next one are likely to be some of the shorter ones in this video. That's because, well, all I really did was catch a lot of Pokemon. In case you haven't figured it out by now, Gotta Catch Em All Yellow is going to be the longest achievement to get by far, requiring me to get all 129 possible Pokemon to obtain in Pokemon Yellow. Today, I plan to make quite a dent in that total, and aside from a few achievements here and there, that was what I focused on. But first, I needed to let my intrusive thoughts win. Goodbye, Pikachu. <laughs> Looks unhappy about it. Yeah, I thought not. Anyway, let's have ourselves a little pokey rap. For the first part of this, I went route by route and caught things I didn't have yet, including Just Pie, Buff Bed, Kakarot, Sandwich, French Terror, Pizza, Owl? Rolling, Duck, A Good Duck, Bulbasaur, Pea Shooter, A Little Guy, No Balls, Landlady, Satan Beater, Rocky Slade, Do Do Your Mom, No Fear, Burn People, Fish 2, No Thoughts, Doug, and Derpy. After catching Rolling, PK was put to sleep, and talking to him gets me the just give me five more minutes achievement. It's nice admiring the little things in life, like sleeping PKs, because we're about to enter a place where all we get to admire is how badly designed a game can get. The Safari Zone. If you're a Pokemon fan, I'm sure you have at least 28 horror stories about this place that your brain is heavily repressing. But for those that don't know, once you pay to enter the Safari Zone, you aren't allowed to just battle the wild Pokemon inside. Oh no, that'd be too easy. Instead, you're given 30 Safari Balls, and for every Pokemon encounter, you're given the option to throw a Safari Ball, throw a rock, or throw some bait. I'd love to sit here and explain the intricate mechanics of each of these options to you. But A, this game's code is so unstable that explaining how it actually works would probably leave you more confused. And B, statistically, the other options don't even matter. Your best bet is to just keep chucking balls until your target graciously decides to stay inside. And if you think that's gonna be an easy task, Pokemon Yellow is going to chew you up and spit you out. This is the evolved form of French Terror. Numbers 
otherwise, you have a 13.7% chance of catching this Pokemon per Safari Ball, making it one of the more generous evolved Pokemon to catch in the Safari Zone. This is, statistically, what your average Safari Zone experience is going to look like. And this is for one of the better Pokemon. Some of the Pokemon you'll have to catch have only a 6% or even 4% chance of being caught per ball. I hope you're starting to see the problem here, but we haven't even scratched the surface yet. The encounter rates of some of these Pokemon are absolutely insane. This is one of the Pokemon we're going to want to catch here to save a shit ton of money later. Your best scenario for finding this guy is looking in Area 2, in which it has a 4% chance to be found in the grass. Combine that with it only having a 6.48% chance of being caught per ball, compared to this guy's 13.7% chance, and you have a recipe for a horrible, horrible grind. But you might be thinking, well, you could just buy this guy in another of the Safari Zone Pokemon in the game corner in Celadon City. It takes some money grinding, but it seems like it would be way easier. And yeah, you're probably right on that one. However, let's do some math. Buying both of the Safari Zone Pokemon, as well as the two Pokemon I also need to get from there, takes a total of 24,000 Game Corner coins. Ignoring the fact that you can only hold 9,999 of these coins at one time, if you don't want to mess with this game's buggy slot machine mechanics, you can buy these coins with your main money at a rate of 50 coins per 1,000 Poké Dollars. Running the numbers for that, that would mean you need a grand total of 480,000 Poké to put that into context, after about two and a half hours of constantly battling the Elite Four with speed up on later in the playthrough, I only had about 412,000 Poké Dollars by the end of it. So yeah, that's not really a much better option. And even if it were, I wouldn't be able to dodge the Safari Zone entirely because Tauros is only available in the Safari Zone. It's a 10% encounter rate, yes, but that's still not great when you consider another mechanic I haven't told you about yet. The step counter. Get a load of this. You are limited on the number of steps you can take per visit. Once you take 500 steps, you get kicked out and have to pay the toll again if you aren't save scumming. Imagine a system where catching some of the evolved Pokemon takes an absolute age to do because the chance of it succeeding is so low. And on top of that, you're running on a sort of time limit where running out of steps means you either have to pay a lot of money or load a lot of saves. That's exactly the pain I dealt with for a little over an hour. And again, that's with speed up. There's only so many times you can watch one of the Pokemon you're looking for run away after dodging several Pokeballs before you start questioning if Game Freak actually liked the people who play their game. During my time in the Safari Zone, I caught Pokemon such as Put It In A Box, Nickname, This WTF, in which I caught the first one I found in the very first ball I threw, My Massive, and Silly Devon. I then ran into two 1% encounters before continuing on to catch Son of a whore! Edward, and then after another 20 minutes, I finally caught It's Over! It wasn't over at all. I needed to catch a couple other things here later. But don't tell past me that or it'll shatter him. Finally out of the Safari Zone for now, I went around some more routes and caught Magnetrio, Pokeballin, Grape Juice, Brian, who I managed to catch in exactly three Ultra Balls, Rocky Road, You Know Who, and Bottom, who I also managed to catch in three Ultra Balls. I made a quick pit stop for a couple more achievements, such as getting the Scared of Ghosts achievement for talking to PK and the Pokemon Tower. I also made a very small fishing trip in order to get the Buckethead achievement. I'm pretty sure this isn't healthy for PK to be doing. Okay, pit stop over. I went into the Seafoam Caverns to catch the next legendary Pokemon, only to realize my box is full and that I'd have to go all the way back to change boxes, rather than the game doing it automatically. I love Gen 1! On the bright side, this lets me catch Mr. Krabs and me for real on my way there and back, before sorting things out and finally catching the legendary Delibird and getting the Uno Dos Trace achievement. This also took me three Ultra Balls, surprisingly. My final trip around Kanto for today netted me Pocket Sand, Weed, Ride On, No You, Ligma, and the ultimate most powerful and awe-inspiring legendary of them all, 
Lord Beervis. That's an odd name. I wonder if their parents mistook the V for a U while putting it on their birth certificate. Anyway, I caught this guy in two Ultra Balls this time, so look at that, we're improving. This gets me the Creation Gone Wrong achievement, and also marks the end of my progress today. I may not have gotten much in the way of concrete achievements, but getting almost 40% of the entire Pokedex in one day should definitely count for something. I plan to finish up the catches needed for the Pokedex and start the level 100 grind on the next stream. The very first thing on my list today was to get one of the scarier achievements out of the way. The Long Way Gauntlet achievement asks you to beat every single trainer on routes 12 through 15 in one go without leaving. Mess this up without realizing and save your game, and you'll have to play through the entire game again in order to retry. It doesn't sound that hard, and it wasn't, but the mere thought of a screw up costing me that much kept me on edge the whole time I was attempting this achievement. Before attempting this, I went ahead and caught the Snorlax south of Lavender Town to get it out of the way before starting at Lavender Town and going south. Only a couple of trainers are actually hidden behind cut trees, so as long as you get those two before sticking to the main path, you should be all set to get the achievement. Have as many strong Pokemon as possible to minimize PowerPoint usage, maybe have a few ethers on hand just in case, and thoroughly destroy every trainer on the route to bag the achievement and lift a huge weight off your shoulders. We've got a few more Pokemon to catch, before I have what I need to start evolving stuff. Thus, I went around some of the region again and got Transman, Brilegal, and Would You, before making another stop in the Safari Zone for more discomfort. I need two Pokemon from the water here, one relatively easy and one a pain in the ass. Both of them have relatively decent encounter rates, and I don't have to take any extra steps to get them once I'm at the water, so it's technically not as bad. The problem is that this guy here has a record low 3 3.72% chance per Safari Ball to be caught. Combine that with a high 42.19% chance to run away every turn, and the fact that fishing can be pretty slow sometimes, and I could have been here for potentially an hour. However, after bagging Morgan pretty quickly, I only had to fish for a little less than 10 minutes before I caught Onyx, the Pokemon who we're going to be spending the most time with come evolution time. I then scooped out the rest of the Pokemon I needed without missing even a single one. Oh, definitely Definitely not, I didn't miss one, you missed one. I got Trixie, Magnum Dong, Sea Queen, Fly Joker, Orpal, Peanut, Captain Falcon, Polyhor. Then I flew to Celadon City and used some of my Poké Dollars to buy coin money. With that, I had pretty much everything I needed to start setting up for the grind. It's time to get PK to level 100 for the Going All The Way achievement. You may ask why I'm not just leveling Lord Beervis up to 100 instead, since he can handle the Elite Four way better. And that's because Lord Beervis will take more experience on average to reach level 100. Lord Beervis is in the slow level up group, which needs 1,250,000 experience to reach level 100. Meanwhile, PK is in the medium fast level up group, which only needs 1 million experience to reach level 100, a difference of 250,000. That saves a lot of time in the long run compared to Lord Beervis. What followed the start of this grind was a series of stupid mistakes that made things way harder than they needed to be. I originally went into the Elite Four with some Pokemon I wanted to evolve as I went along. This initially led to Oddish evolving into Weeping Bell, Lion King 2 evolving into Lion King 3, and Game Freak evolving into Creatures Inc. However, I decided after this run through to only use PK so that I'll get to level 100 faster. But then I went in with only PK, which is also stupid when not only could I just bring Lord Beervis as well in case things don't go well, but PK doesn't have enough power points on any of his moves to really pull this off in one go. I went to a couple places around the region and got some PP ups for Thunderbolt and Body Slam, but even then, PK's lack of power led to a lot of trial, error, and dead rats. Eventually, I developed a strategy that let me beat the Elite Four somewhat consistently. This girl in Saffron City gives you the Mimic TM in exchange for a Poké Doll. Mimic lets you choose one of your opponent's moves and temporarily give them to your Pokémon for the duration of the battle. This is crucial 
crucial against Bruno and Lance, and also saves power points on Body Slam. After another hour of being dumb, I finally decide to bring in Lord Beervis, cementing the final strategy I would use to consistently beat the Elite Four. I spam Thunderbolt against all of Lorelei's Pokemon, only using Body Slam on this thing since it does a bit more damage. For Bruno, I quickly mimic Dig from his first Rocky Slade, then use it to beat both Rocky Slades while Thunderbolting everything else. I save before Agatha since she can faint PK rather quickly with bad luck, then basically spam Thunderbolt and pray. For Lance, I Thunderbolt the Briligal, Body Slam the first Onyx, then mimic the second Onyx to get Ice Beam before Body Slamming it too, Thunderbolt the Stoner, and use Ice Beam on Spike to win what's probably one of the more consistent fights. I save before the champion, as Pocket Sand still requires a bit of luck to win. I eventually was able to just Body Slam Pocket Sand twice and hope for no crit, but at lower levels I decided to mimic Earthquake for later. I use either move a couple times while healing when needed, use either move on Serial, Body Slam Egg IRL, Thunderbolt Should You, Earthquake on Kitsune if I had any left, and Thunderbolt otherwise, then Earthquake or Body Slam on Zip Zap. This still isn't perfectly consistent, but saving mitigates that for the most part, so this strategy let me smoothly get PK a bunch of levels as fast as possible. I eventually get enough money to get what I thought was the last Pokemon I'd need minus the trades. So after unshackling my totally real Game Boy from its petty limitations and letting it play Pokemon Yellow at a ludicrous speed, getting all these coins at normal speed would take over 15 minutes by the way, Jesus Christ. I get enough coins to finally buy Poglypuff, who will promptly be boxed and never given a second thought afterwards. Especially with a name like that, oh my god. God, what were we thinking? Then I simply spent a little more time in the Elite Four getting PK up to level 96 before using some of my rare candies to boost him up to level 100 for the achievement. One of the big grinds was finally finished and I wrapped up streaming for today. However, although this achievement was fairly time consuming, the final stream would have me tackling the biggest and most taxing achievement of them all. Let's use the EXP all to run through the Elite Four and let all my Pokemon re realize their full potential. Wait, hold on, cut the music. So I may have forgotten to press record again for the first 10 minutes, which may not seem like much, but spare a thought for poor silly Devon, whose evolution didn't get shown because of it. Look into its sad, lonely little eyes and have sympathy for this tragic mistake that robbed it of its moment in the spotlight. Wait, what's this? I have a moonstone right here. Oh my goodness, look, it's evolving. Look at you, you've evolved from silly Devon into strong Devon. Isn't that just swell? No Pokemon left behind on this show. Yeah, definitely. Anyway.
And there you have it. That's every single Pokemon evolved and added to the Pokedex. The rest should be able to be obtained via the in-game trades, all of which are required for some more achievements. Let's go through them all, shall we? Behind this cut tree on Route 2 is this guy who asks for a silly billy in exchange for a Miles. Completing this trade gets me the It's Mr. Mime Time achievement and gives me another Pokemon for my Pokedex. Inside the underground path on Route 5 is this person who wants a Malipe in exchange for a Ricky. This trade not only gets you the King of Fighters achievement, but this trade in particular is awesome because doing it immediately evolves Ricky into Super Ricky, something that you rarely have happen in a Pokemon game. Slightly less awesome is this person in the Cinnabar lab who will trade you a Cezanne for a Goobertron. I guess it's nice if you don't want to bother with the Seafoam Islands, but I'm the type that likes to catch all my Pokemon myself, plus you have to go there anyway for Delibird if you're catching them all anyway, so eh, at least I get an achievement for it. But at least it's not as bad a deal as this guy's trade. He wants a Mommy Sorry for a Sticky. Sticky is easily catchable in the Pokemon Mansion, while Mommy Sorry is one of the those annoying Safari Zone Pokemon. Yeah, not worth it. This achievement is called Literal Pile of Shit, and I find myself very inclined to agree. Also in Cinnabar Lab is this guy that wants to trade a good duck for Buffy, which I see is pretty useful since evolving math exam can be a major pain in the ass compared to just catching a good duck north of Vermilion City. This gets you the real number one. Named that because, fun fact, Buffy was actually the very first Pokemon ever designed. You learn something new every day. Two trades left, and I can tell this section's kind of dragging a little, so I'll rapid fire through them. This guy at the Route 11 gate trades a Gurio for a Ligma. Not a great trade, got the Can You Dig It achievement. And finally, Route 18 gate, this guy trades a Spike for a Put It In A Box. No, not that Spike. Both of them are literally Safari Zone encounters, so it's up to you whether or not that's worth it. Trading it gets me the problem with Parasect and... <sighs> what Pokemon am I missing? Alakazam, which I can't get. Golem, which I can't get. Farfetched. Can you get Farfetched? Yes. It's a 5% encounter on Route 12 or 13. It's not a trade. Yeah, I didn't know they changed it so that Cabbage could just be encountered in the wild. But no matter, after a small search in the Route 12 grass, I find my target. Finally, it should be done. Ladies and gentlemen, Gotta catch them all. Yellow. Yay, it's cabbage. Yellow! That leaves me with one last achievement, and it's a bit of a finicky one. Halfway requires you to get all six Pokemon in your party to level 50, but that isn't actually what I ended up doing. After filling my party with Pokemon that are level 50 or more, I should only have to level one of them up to get the achievement, but that didn't work. At the suggestion of a comment under the achievement, I saved and soft reset the game. And believe it or not, there it is! Yay! Halfway and 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 time! Yay! Wow, you only did it in 26 minutes. Wow! <laughs> if you thought Sonic 3's mastery was underwhelming, try a mastery after resetting the game. And so, my journey finally comes to a close, and I've mastered Pokemon Yellow. This was really engaging, possibly even more so than some of the Sonic games I've played so far. Hey, uh, post-editing Supersonic here. I need to replace this outro because I was originally talking about how the next Retro Achievements game was going to be Smash 64. However, upon looking at the achievement list and realizing that it wasn't going to be very fun for me, and combined with the fact that my mental health has been really, really shit this past month, I needed to not play that and play something else that I knew I would like. So, instead of that, the next Retro Achievements game is Sonic Heroes. Why not Sonic Adventure or Sonic Adventure 2? Because this is my favorite Sonic game of all time, and I think I need that after the month I've had. So, yeah. Original outro is scrapped, so I guess this has to end the video instead, huh? Uh, 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 Sonic 2 sucks!